Today's lesson is going to be about transpositions inside of Sn. And a transposition is just a two cycle. Transpose means to switch two things, and so a transposition is switching two things. So typically we have alpha is equal to i goes to j and everything else is fixed. It's important to realize that products of non-disjoint transpositions are just like non-disjoint permutations in that they do not commute. So if alpha is equal to 1 goes to 2 and beta is equal to 2 goes to 3, if we do first do alpha and then do beta, we're looking at this particular product. And when we compute it, we're going to have uh, 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 3, so 1 goes to 3, and then we come and look at 3, and there are no 3's here, so 3 goes to 2, so 3 goes to 2, and then it turns out that 2 is going to go to 1, and uh, 1 stays fixed, so that's what the answer becomes. On the other hand, if we look at first do beta and then do alpha, our permutations are going to look like this. The product will look like that symbolically. And when we compute this, we start do it in exactly the same way. There are no ones here. One goes to two. And so we get one goes to two. And right away, because these two things are not equal, I know that these two permutations are not equal. But let's finish off what the uh, product is. And so we now are looking at two. 2 goes to 3, and there are no 3's here, so 2 goes to 3. And then when we look at computing 3, 3 is going to go to 2, and 2 is going to go to 1, so consequently 3 goes to 1. Now there is another thing too that I want to point out. Uh, it looks it, to, to look in terms of the orders, the order of alpha times beta in our example is equal to 3, which is not the least common multiple. Let's get an eraser there. That is not the least common multiple of the order of alpha and the order of beta, because the least common multiple of the order of alpha and the order of beta, since they're both two cycles, is just equal to two. So uh, products of two cycles, if they're not disjoint, their their orders can basically, if it's two things like this, it's going to wind up uh, being a three cycle. We'll see that in a bit. But I also want to look at some other stuff dealing with two uh, with these products of transpositions. So the first thing that I want to do is look at this example. And I would suggest that you stop and try to figure out what this product is all on your own. It shouldn't take you more than a couple of minutes. So st stop the, the, the video and compute it. Now once you've computed the answer, let's look at what we get and we'll compute this guy together. So let's actually change my answer to red. Now, this has got a whole bunch of things, and they're not all disjoint, so it's going to be important to watch how I trace through these things. So again, I'm always going to start with what happens to 1. There are no 1s until we get to here, and 1 goes to 2, and there are no 2s there. So what that tells me is that 1 goes to 2. Now we're going to be checking on what happens to the twos. There are no twos until here. Two goes to one, and then one goes to three. So that tells me 
that 2 goes to 3. So now we start looking at the 3s. Well, what happens here? There are no 3s, there are no 3s until we get to here and 3 goes to 1. So that tells me that 3 goes to 1, and that means, since I've already got a 1 there, that I can just put a parenthesis in that cycle. So now I'm going to be looking at what happens to 4. And in this permutation, this is the one that's tricky. 4 goes to 5, but there's no 5s anywhere in here, so oh, that's not really tricky. 4 just goes to 5. Now, we have to start looking at what happens to 5. 5 goes to 4, and then 4 goes to 6, but there are no more 6s, so as a consequence, 5 goes to 6. And let's clean up just a little bit there. Now we have to figure out what goes, what happens to 6. Well, as always, we start at the back end. There's our first 6. 6 goes to 4, and then 4 goes to 7, and there are no 7s. So that tells me that 6 goes to 7. And when we wind up looking at what happens to 7, there are no 7s until here. 7 goes to 4, and there are no 4s. So 7 goes to 4. And because there's a 4 there, that tells me I don't need that, and I can just complete the parenthesis that way. So there's one example. Now what I want you to do is find this example. So stop the uh, video for a few minutes and compute this particular product of transpositions. Okay, and when you restart the video, let's again try and calculate this together. And again, uh, we're going to start at the back, and we're, going, we're always going to start with what happens to 1. So we start tracing. There are no 1s until we get to here. And 1 goes to 3, and then 3 goes to 2. So that tells me 1 goes to 2. Well, now we're going to be looking for 2s. There are no 2s until we get to here, and, and that says 2 goes to 3. So now we need, need to start looking at what happens to 3. There are no 3s until we get to here. And 3 goes to 1, and there are no 1s there. So that tells me that 3 goes to 1, and since there's already this 1 here, that tells me I'm at the end of a cycle. Now, we keep going. What happens to 4? Well, 4 goes to 7, and 7 goes to 6, and 6 goes to 5, and 5 stays fixed, so that says 4 goes to 5. Okay, well, what happens to 5? There are no 5s until we get here. 5 goes to 6, and there are no 6s here, so that says 5 goes to 6. And then we look at what happens to 6. Well, our first 6 is here. 6 goes to 7. And there are no 7s in through here, so that says 6 goes to 7. So now we look at what happens to the 7s. Well, 7 goes to 4. And there are no 4s throughout all of that, so that says 7 goes to 4, and that lets me end that particular uh, product, that particular cycle. Now, one of the things that I want to notice is that when we're multiplying these things, the answers that we get are in disjoint cycle form. The other interesting thing here is that these two products are exactly the same.
And what that says is that a particular permutation might have more than one way of being written in terms of, of products of transpositions. So the net result of this is a permutation can have more than one representation as a product of two cycles. Well, this actually raises two questions that we're going to look at in more detail in the upcoming videos. So I kind of want to set these questions up. So we will look at the next, the, 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 the idea. So some questions that we really need to look at. The first question is, can every permutation be written as a product of two cycles. And the second thing that we want to look at is we already know that this product of transpositions might not be unique. So we want to simply ask the question, is there anything that is consistent about two different representations of a particular alpha as a product of two cycles. So those are the questions that will motivate the next two videos.